Welcome to another figure week, park surface week, organic week. Hey everyone, my name is Ahmed Aldouri. I'm a concept artist and former instructor at Art Center College of Design, Brainstorm, CCS, CGMA, and various other places. And I would like to introduce to you this digital painting course that I've created. But before we get into anything, I just wanna thank you for the support you've all given me this whole time. And with the support of so many of you, I've been able to put together everything I know about painting into this digital painting course. You want to become a pro, illustrator, concept artist, or even just a hobbyist, but you don't have a clear map to get there. And that's where I come in. I spent the last six months compiling everything I know from my 20 years of art practice, and I've turned it all into a map. Starting with foundations such as rendering shapes, color theory, painting basic subjects, understanding brushwork, brush economy, all that fun stuff, deconstructing the skull, drawing it from every angle, Angle, all the way to master studies, stylized painting, and you'll find yourself at the end of the course doing a concept art project based on everything that we learn in the first 14 lessons. So how does it work? Well, you sign up, you watch the lectures, do the assignments, post them to the community page if you want, and treat it as a self-study, except for those of you who have signed up for the weekly meeting where I personally critique your work in a virtual classroom setting. I believe learning by repetition is super important. That's what I've sort of presented a lot in this course, and the assignments are tailored for that, as adapted from my time teaching at Art Center. And each of these lessons have step-by-step -step explanations in real time. If you've ever seen my videos, you know exactly how I teach. And this course is intended to be a substitute for a college level course, but you don't have to pay the four or five thousand dollars per class, racking up maybe 200K in debt. With my custom design course, you'd be paying a fraction of that. And of course, I also have payment plan options if you don't want to pay for the whole thing at once. Thank you for watching this, and I'll see you soon. Hi everyone, here is Jules from Concept 101. We have a quick announcement for you. We have now set up an art competition with lots of awesome prizes. Um, the brief is the brush is my to another sword. We're looking for entries of any genre and styles and it can include keyframes, illustration, character, environment, vehicle and prop design. You can find more information about the competition and prizes on the website. We will announce the winner and distribute the prizes on the 9th of September at the event. So see you there. Hey guys and welcome back to the Jalart cast uh, here at Game of Thunder episodes. Uh, thanks for tuning in once again and hoping that all you guys are staying safe and creative wherever you are in the world. Um, today we are joined by uh, multiple people uh, and I kind of, I would say Digital Art cast first. Um, a strange how it's kind of came full circle because when I made my first episode, um, or first proper episode, an interview with Titus Lunter before we went to Industry Workshops 2016, uh, the podcast was kind of birthed. And now we're kind of coming full circle where we're talking to people who are trying to put on another event, um, another industry event in the UK. Um, and I think it's going to be one that's uh, definitely going to be exciting. And uh, I think it was really important to get them on to talk about it because um, we've talked about this multiple times with a lot of people on the podcast. 
about how there's just a lack of um, really good events around the world, but especially in the UK, I think there's definitely been a, a gap that's kind of need to be filled since Industry Workshops has took a hiatus at the moment and, and aren't really doing events. So uh, yeah, today we are joined by uh, Daniel, Jules and Stefan uh, are all here today to talk about uh, Concept 101, which is an event they will be running um, September the 9th in London. And uh, yeah, we just thought we'd get them on to talk about the event and why they're doing it and, uh, and, and you know, what's going to be expected on the day. Um, really, just quickly, um, thanks for, for coming on, guys, and talking. Um, I really appreciate it and I hope you find it interesting. Um, but for the guys who don't know you, of course, um, and maybe a bit behind the scenes of what you guys do, um, maybe starting with uh, Daniel, we can maybe walk around and just see uh, what you guys do day to day and your and your normal jobs. Uh, so I'm Daniel, um, I'm from the UK, uh, studied graphic design at university, um, at UAL, uh, in London. And now I'm a junior concept artist at ILM. Uh, I don't have many release projects, uh, because most things are like heavy NDA and we're working, you know, years in advance on stuff. But, yep. uh, Doctor Strange came out recently. That was one that I've worked on and, uh, did some post-production stuff on. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Awesome. Grand. Uh, Jules? Uh, so my name is Jules. Um, I come from Switzerland. I'm now based in the UK. I'm a junior concept artist for a company called Painting Practice. I work on movies and series. And uh, yeah, I started about a year and a half ago. So pretty much all the projects I worked on are still not out Indeed. yet. So yeah, awesome. so hopefully <laughs> soon I'll be able to talk more about it. But uh, thanks a lot for having us. I really appreciate yeah. it. Of course. And, and Stefan, of course. Hey, nice to meet you and nice to meet everyone who's listening and tuning in. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, a <laughs> I'm <laughs> Stefan and I am uh, uh, I'm from Slovakia. So uh, hi to all the Slovakian concept artists. Um, anyway, I studied in uh, UK uh, in Staffordshire University. Um, and then uh, it took me a while until I got a job. Uh, uh, but I got a job eventually at Sharkmob. In between, I was working as a freelance concept artist and doing some little jobs here and there. Uh, but yeah, now I work at Sharkmob. Um, uh, at uh, also a lot of NDA stuff. Uh, it's all buried under NDA. But I, I, you know, I focus. Uh, I do a lot of like hard surface type design and stuff like that. So I guess that's that's what I've been, uh, you know, thrown into, and I enjoy it a lot. So. That's it. Nice. That's me. Fantastic. Yeah, great. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, you guys are all established. You've all got um, your foot in the door, basically, in the industry. Um, I've got to ask a question to kind of all of you, um, and we can probably just work our way around again, but what was the first event you guys went to um, when you were kind of studying and, and coming up as, as junior concept artists? Was there one in particular you want to talk about or one that you went to first or any ones that kind of strike your mind? Um. Well, I went to Vertex, uh, which was in London in, I want to say, I think I went to 2019 and 2020, but well, that might not be right. Maybe 2018 and 2019. Uh, and pandemic, at, yeah. yeah, at one of those, I met Stefan. Um, so we've known each other for a few years. Um, but that, that was a great event for me because I'm sure that we're all going to say exactly the same thing. But, you yeah. know, when you go to an event, it's such an eye opener because, uh, mm-hmm prior to that point you're living in your own little bubble i mean there aren't that many people who do concept art as a full-time job right. um and especially like i was studying graphic design at university when i went mm-hmm. to my first one so i was totally isolated from like the realities of uh what you had you know the quality of work you had to get to to get the job right. the kind of tools and skill sets you needed and mm-hmm. um yeah it was my first exposure to all that stuff so it was really kind of foundational um and I, i'd say you know if, if people ask me now, I'd say it's probably the start of my career proper. You know? Right. So I was learning skills before then, but they weren't going towards a specific goal. Um, right. So yeah, it was great for me. Fantastic. Yeah. Jules? Well, for me, it's, uh, I mean, the, the impact of the events is very similar to Dan. Um, mm. The first event I went to, I think it was in 2014 or 15. It was the first industry workshops. Oh, wow. and, uh, oh. I, I somehow got in contact with Daniel Matthews uh, at yeah. that time. And uh, I'm, I just flew from Switzerland uh, to go to Mr. Workshops and um, mm-hmm. I was helping as a, as a helper at the event. Right. And it was just, you know, I, I opening experience for me because I was coming from Switzerland where there's not a lot of concept arts. Uh, right. 
no industry there about movies yeah, yeah. or video games or anything like this. So it was yeah. the first time I really understood what it meant, that it was mm -hmm. possible, it was a, a real career, people are doing that. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I learned a lot. And um, then I just came back every year to the event. Yeah. Until Fantastic. I think 2019, it was the, the last. 2018 was the last industry workshops that happened. Yeah. 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 Back in the day. So, so yeah, then this, this is the last event I went to. And uh, yeah, yeah, so a few years were an event. Uh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, so. and Stefan, obviously, we're probably going to talk about Vertex right before you met Daniel. Um, was that your first? Stefan? Oh, can you hear me? Hello? Hello. I th can, you, can you hear? All yeah, I can right. hear you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, you're still there. No, I was just going to ask, for your, what was your first event also? Was it the same as Daniel? Were you at Vertex also? Yes, yeah, yeah. I was also at Vertex. Um, and... I, uh, I mean, like, it was funny because I, I used, so I've seen, like, I had a friend who went to industry workshops, um, and it was about, like, the last industry workshops after they, they had the demo days, I think, once or twice or whatever, but right, I never yeah. went to that, so I heard about Vertex, um, mm -hmm. and, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was fun. It was fun to go to an event like that, and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for me it was a little bit different experience compared maybe yeah. to like what Daniel was saying, uh, where he learned about the quality. I definitely learned that as well. But for me, the most important part that I would say was uh, about Vertex was like getting to know Daniel really because <laughs> he knows so many, like he, he knew so many people. And I think like by us getting to know each other, I, you know, he introduced me to a lot of lot of new friends and um yeah, yeah. um so, so so for me that was and you know and i i have been hanging out with them ever since so that's yeah fantastic awesome. yeah i mean like these events definitely changed the whole like you said the bubble you're in i mean for me especially it was a really weird tale of i was following at the time you know different artists on instagram who were doing stuff i thought was concept art and then one i followed in particular was anna hollenrake and i don't know anna at all but she's in london she's with mediatonic and she was at the time streaming on twitch and when she was doing a painting uh she was talking about is anybody going to industry workshops and i was kind of typing in the chat what's industry workshops and she went oh yeah no it's an event in london you know and it's happening and people go and do talks to other concept artists and give advice and i was i never knew there was such a thing so at that time and i think the end of 2015 it was my first year in university when i was retraining i basically saved up most of my money from university and other jobs and booked a ticket to london went down and then was hooked ever since going to events and obviously i've been to teach you and and uh you know imag uh playgrounds and then lightbox in la in 2019 where i got to you know check out right games and buzzard and stuff like that so yeah these events are great they're great for just networking and meeting people and and, and growing that initial base of, of understanding what the industry is so um yeah i mean Running an event, you know, from speaking to Daniel and a couple other guys like Alex Heath and people who are involved in, in industry workshops is a huge undertaking. Like it's, you know, not a joke at all. It, it sometimes can take a whole year just to plan it um, and get things organized. People arrange to come to places, tickets organized and people flown over, you know, sponsors, that kind of stuff. So I guess we'll start with Daniel, but you guys can just jump in when you feel uh, you want to. What's been some of the biggest challenges of that the last however long you've been planning it, a year, six months? I mean, I think one of the biggest problems was just obviously it's our first event. Um, and so it was a fairly big learning curve. Um, Daniel from Industry Workshops gave us some great advice and mm -hmm. uh, we kind of just figured out the rest as we went in a lot of ways. Um, it's, uh, I mean, it, it's really great to see how it's turned out because you now that we're so close to the event and we can see how it's all coming together it's mm -hmm. really, you know, I think we're at a point now where we can see that oh, this is going to be really good, uh, which yeah. is really nice to see. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think we kind of, you know, one of the important things about the event for us was that it was free. And mm -hmm. I think that actually made uh, some of it a lot easier to organize in a lot of ways because, right. um, you know, we were going out to people kind of with goodwill and mm -hmm. uh, trying our best to, you know, say like, you know, we're, we're trying to do this to... Um, in as egalitarian a way as possible make it free for people to come uh make it easy to people to uh actually attend mm -hmm. um uh, and that i think meant that a lot of people were a lot more willing to kind of commit to it early on which was really nice yeah. and it was really great to see 
so many people in the community and even at companies uh mm -hmm. just kind of putting themselves out there and saying yeah you know the kind of believe in it and uh, agree with the kind of thing we were trying to do which was yeah awesome. the goal the kind of vision you guys have for the event yeah, yeah it's been great yeah i mean i mean even just i think one of the most i'd say difficult things is the speakers also because sometimes you're dealing with people who are in multiple different countries all over the world and you try to get them to one place at one time for one day you know it, it's a very logistical thing to organize um has that been something you've been kind of splitting amongst all of these or has one person been kind of championing that as they've been going i i think uh as far as i remember all of our speakers are in the uk right okay yeah, right yeah yeah, yeah. i think here. that was the that was the <laughs> one of the things that we were like yeah it's difficult um to get anyone over and um well, I got a. I have a friend um, who works at Shark Woman. He used to work uh, uh, at CDPR, and he, mm. uh, you know, uh, he knew a bunch of guys, great concept artists from there. But mm. it was like it would it would have been like a little bit more of a logistical issue to like try to get them here. And, across. Yeah. yeah, and if we wanted to, then it would be difficult to be. Yeah, uh, we just we just decided to to well, we know enough great artists here in UK. So yep. let's just like uh, get those people and and there's like incredible talent in the UK. So you know, yeah, I don't yeah, yeah. think uh, I think everyone's going to be quite happy with the with the speakers that we have. So yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's some really great um, people that I've seen anyway that are lined up. Even people like Sandra, you know, people who are also you know maybe not from the UK originally, but are now working here anyway full time and you know in great companies like you know Sumo or you know Creative Assembly places like that. So yeah, there is a wealth of talent. It's always funny when I go to international events and people talk about the UK and like, oh you guys got much of a, a game scene over there. I'm like, yeah, like even for me as an aspect from being from Scotland, you know, uh Rockstar North is down the road in Edinburgh who make Grand Theft Auto, which is one of the biggest entertainment, you know, you know, properties of all time. So I mean it's like it's it's weird when people have this uh, idea of this small island we live on that it's it's maybe backwards in terms of you know industry but yeah, and you guys work at places like ilm and shark mob where you know they're kind of leading the way and and uh yeah it's always interesting but then was that something that you came across when you were trying to run the event where people was it hard for people to take you seriously because you were running the event in london specifically or was it just a thing where people had a, a uh, an understanding of what you were trying to do i think, I think the think only since, problem oh, sorry, just yeah, yeah uh, since we we it was, it's our first event it hasn't been any event in a while uh, mm -hmm. It was a bit of a who are you? I mean, we're also we're also juniors in the industry, so that we don't have much of a name yet. So it right. was a lot a lot of work to kind of convince people and also prove people that it's not just an idea that free run the people have. It's an idea that we want to make and we're going to make it and we're going to go through yep. it. And um, so yeah, that that, that was definitely a challenge. But um, mm -hmm. as Dan said before, people just have a lot of goodwill and. Mm -hmm. Probably the lack of event also helped us because it means that there was like a huge room that was like make an event like th this this zero, zero event just like make one um, at least that we were, that we were aware of, it, of at the time um, specifically for concept art as well right specifically yeah, just for that yeah. discipline yeah mm -hmm. I mean there's um, other events London, like Comic Con that hmm. uh, you know I mean there's also small amounts apologies. of stuff with. Uh, you know, I, I went to Comic Con last whenever it was last month, and uh, yeah. like Loish was there, I think, and a few mm -hmm. other people. Um, but yeah, it's not specific. You know, you're getting like three people of a one thousand booths who maybe are in the same specialization as you. Yeah. So it's uh, I think it's really nice to you know have something where you can go and meet people who share the same passion as you. I mean, like I said before, concept art is very weirdly niche and specific, realistically. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really cool to be able to go and you know talk to people and have them you know talk about things like scott robertson or like certain weird 3d things that you do and they'll be like oh yeah totally um, yeah. yeah it's a really nice feeling so yeah sorry Stephen, you were saying also i was just saying uh that there's also like develop in brighton i don't know I, like that's a conference as well that's happening mm -hmm. i think they're like but they're all like more like rather than concept art specific it's all just like games general um, game dev yeah. stuff yeah so yeah, yeah. it is like when we started this event or like we thought about it mm -hmm. we wanted to try and do something that was like concept art specific at least like uh right now uh because that was um um yeah it was probably that gap. Like you said, there was, yeah there was yeah. one that was you know like you said you've got even vertex itself as as more a, i'd say a generalist view like even i would say that they have some things more a heavy emphasis on 3d or people within 3d sometimes are vfx but yeah 2d concept art is definitely 
a niche within the industry and uh, similarly though I think also it's one of the the most sought after jobs in the industry I think when people obviously get into the games and, and VFX and film the one thing they look at is you know like the legends like you know FCD schools and Doug Chang and the guys like Scott Robertson like you're talking about who you know has been in the podcast twice now but like even he says now it's like you know people think that it's oversaturated but it really isn't in a sense he's like you know look at the music industry talk about oversaturation he's like with concept art you know there's maybe like 10,000 people every year set out to do it but maybe a thousand make it it's like so you know there's also a deficit they find within the industry as i've talked to people over the years where there's too many jobs not enough people to fill them or not enough people that are good enough to fill them also so yeah it's a weird mix i think yeah, especially yeah. in uh our choice not going well we're interrupting each other <laughs> <laughs> go, 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 go. Uh, go. <laughs> uh, I, I would just say i think especially with the you know the, the that there's so many jobs i think ultimately it's that um, there's just not that much education in Europe with regards to concept art. I mean, if you think about like uh, the job market in the States, uh, mm-hmm. I think because there's so many more schools there where you can go and specialize uh, there and do concept art and learn about entertainment design. Um, you know, it's not just art center. There's so, so many of them. Um, yeah, yeah. Whereas in, in Europe, you've got maybe New Edge, Focal mm-hmm. Point, and then mm-hmm. a cluster of uh, universities who have courses where you do them yeah. like Staffordshire where Stefan went. Um, so it's interesting, uh, especially when I, I talk to quite a lot of students and, um, mm-hmm. I think it's really just like an informational thing where, mm-hmm. like I said, but when I first wanted to do concept art, I really didn't mm-hmm. have a great idea of what it was. And a mm-hmm. lot of the people that I talked to is the same where they have one idea of what the industry is and what they need to learn. And mm-hmm. then, you know, you have to go and show them portfolios and be like, no, you know, if you want to be a character designer, this is what that job actually looks like. Um, yeah. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jules, you were going to say as well, or uh, it's pretty similar to what Daniel said. I, I just said that's also yeah. why we want to make a content art specific event and not like right. a industry or a, a pop art, or not, not pop, yeah. sorry, pop culture event. My bad. Yeah, yeah uh, of because course. you know, it, as you said, concept art is very popular, but I think it's also very misunderstood in a way, or like people think it's just illustration or. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah Marketing art, that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. The yeah, pretty so pictures. Tries to to just op- open the doors a bit. Like we yeah. all benefited in the past from yeah. events. Be like, hey, that's what it actually is. And yeah. here, here are the steps that you can actually uh, focus on to like get into an industry and get some knowledge out of it. Yeah. Yeah. I think I agree with you on the the skills thing as well. There's definitely a lack of. And when you talk about New Edge and even Focal Point, they're not schools in the traditional sense where they have this big establishment behind them. I mean. Derek Zabrowski, who's been in the podcast, of course, where Michel runs Focal Point. Um, that was just two guys with an idea like you guys who just wanted to make something and it happened. You know, I just yesterday recorded an episode with Antonio Stiparts, who runs Artwad, which is a huge online school now also where people are learning from him. And he also wants to do the whole brick and mortar thing at one point in Belgium and run that. But his approach to what he calls now context design instead of concept art, which I think is a great thing and name to change it to at one point, but <laughs> because it's been through so many iterations, um, but like, yeah, he talks about the, the job now and what it entails and he talks about, you know, the way that the industry has gone, but yeah, there's only a few dedicated people out there who are really championing the, the school's idea and, uh, learning. And I think especially in the UK, there's, there's almost nothing. I know that there's, um, um, I forget the name of the, the place specifically in London, um, that do um, almost like an intense course where the, you go for like 60 or 16 weeks or something like that. You go in and learn, um, and you pay so much money. It's like a private school almost. It's not like a traditional outlet but you pay so much and then they kind of ramp your your, your stuff up um but apart from that there's not a ton it's mostly just traditional universities like i went to when i done 3d animation it was a university in scotland and you know the the software i mean I, when i joined hilarious not hilariously but just funny to think in 2015 2016 when i joined they had just moved from lightwave to maya like that was the jump they made <laughs> you know what i mean like so it was like you know oh, man. And, yeah, 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 I mean, that's the whole thing we were coming up against in schools like that, where yeah. and not really their fault per se, you know, because it's hard to keep up that constant edge of, you know, like using Blender and, and other things and being on the, the cutting edge of things. But um, it was funny just to look at the fact that they were using, like they were just starting to use Maya. And now, you know, it's, you know, people, are, Blender's now been the shift and, and whatever will be next. But um, yeah, I mean, do you see that within... The people you're talking to, you know, when you talk to students, is it something very common that, that it's hard to keep up with that information overload? Um, I mean, I th- yeah, I think I talked to the most students out of the three of us. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I can, I can. 
<laughs> Sorry, I can then give a little view about like the what I think. Yeah, even when you guys were students game. and you were learning, it yeah. would have been the same. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I, I can, when I was a yeah. student, I I literally spent. I so I did graphics for three years, and I mm. it was meant to be more of a large scale kind of wide course. So right. I was meant to be able to do illustration and stuff like that as well alongside it, mm. and there was a film course on it and all this other mm. stuff. And um, I really just spent three years arguing my tutors about concept art being a viable job, uh, you know, <laughs> which is crazy to think about. And it's, it's yes, kind of yes. funny yeah. because, all, all did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. maybe not Stefan who actually did a concept art course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If if he was arguing about that, that's worrying. But uh, yeah, man. <laughs> but we uh, we we had a. It was you were saying about the Maya jump and stuff. Um, and uh, it, we used to so we used to use Maya in our uni. And then mm. me and my uh, friend, uh, we uh, me and my friend Alex, we we start to um, use Blender. Mm. And, and we were like, oh, just do everything in Blender. Like, doesn't matter, you know. Jama Jurabai uses Blender, so I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. the, you know, as soon as Jama yeah, uses yeah. something, it has to be the shit. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, so we started to try it out, and uh, mm -hmm. eventually we managed to persuade all our te like most of the teachers uh, to be like, okay, so they learned Blender and, as well, and then they started to teach to everyone. Uh, it was yeah. it was funny, yeah, yeah. Yama's Yama's a freak though. I mean, like I love Yama at best, but like the guy just the guy just like he he put out a post. I think it was today or yesterday where he was been doing. Did you see it? Like the sculpting, the the soldier he'd done. Where yeah. He basically yeah. Got, oh my god! Like I was like Jesus Christ! It's no, but you know, bad enough that he's an incredible two D artist, but now he's he's taking three D jobs. Like how dare he? Um, but like yeah, the whole voxel thing he's doing, and and then he's using a three D coat. I think to to sculpt, which is a whole thing now where there's this whole revolution of like three D coat coming back around and people yeah. are using it and. Yeah, because the only place I knew that used that was Blizzard because they use it on Warcraft. But, um, but yeah, 3D coat is supposed to be the, the shit for modeling also. So, I mean, that'll maybe be a thing where, you know, we talk about Blender as if it's the only thing you'll ever need to know again. But, like, the industry changes so rapidly that who knows in a year or two where things are going to go. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely one of these. And it's, I think, interesting at ILM as well because, you know, they have a heavy emphasis on 3D production as well when yeah. they make um, stuff throughout and... You know, Carla Ortiz, when we had her on, always famously said that when they interviewed her, she, they were kind of like, "Yes, you're going to learn ZBrush, and you're going to learn." And she was like, "No, no, I'm just I'm happy <laughs> painting. Like, I'm just going to paint." <laughs> and they're like, "Okay, you know, like they kind of made an exception for her." But you know, I think about Pablo, uh, the two Pablos, indeed, but the, the guys who went when they were kind of starting ILM, and and you know, learning 3D was a huge part of the the gig because they could already paint, but like the 3D stuff was rudimentary to what they were doing. Um, I think it, you know, with you guys, is it common that you're all kind of using 3D within production as well? I think if you're doing working now, I mean, um, I, I actually watched the episode where you had Carla on. I found it really interesting because mm -hmm. I just, you know, think about my experience. I just don't think you would be able to do that now unless you no. were really. No, she was definitely the exception. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I think the problem is now that, and it's not a problem, it's just an evolution of the industry. But if you're dealing with clients, you know, the ability to uh, design a set and then mm -hmm. show it to them from 10 different angles is totally yep. invaluable. Um, and sadly, even if you're as good as Jamie Jones or Craig Mullins at painting, you're not going to be able to do that uh, by yeah. hand. Um, so I think it's just one of those things which has become a reality of the industry. And personally, for me, um, I think it's a great kind of evolution because I think it means that you can go into more detail and depth and mm -hmm. really understand what it is that you're building. You know, it gives mm -hmm. you so much more kind of information and power with the design um which i really like personally i think 3d tools are great um but yeah i, I would say uh uh contrary to this um a very interesting uh, thing i i have i think if you do character concept art there's still a chance you can uh start off as a 2d because i do know yeah. someone who recently got hired and he uh he's really good at doing characters in um 2D, and I'm sure he's gonna eventually learn, uh, you know, like a zebra and stuff like that. But uh, I think certain, like, if if you are hired for a certain specific thing, you mm -hmm. have a chance to be like, okay, I, I just do, you know, 2D. Um, I think that's still possible. Uh, but 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 it, uh, Daniel is correct. Like for most things, not much, especially if you do like hard surface stuff. Mm -hmm. even uh, probably or like anything to do with vehicles or whatever it becomes difficult because it has so many angles and they'll ask you for more than just front view so yeah, yeah. 
also yeah. with uh, time constraints like if you work for like a series or, or a movie mm -hmm. I, I i don't think they want you to take the time to paint their thing into the they probably will yeah, fire yeah. you <laughs> if you, <laughs> <laughs> if you just <laughs> <take the> time <laughs> and do, and do it nicely uh which which will be fun but um but you know like it's just yeah how the industry is and uh and as i said before it actually helps to like focus more on design and to yep. to just get be faster as well I mean, I think yeah. it's interesting that you were asking about, you know, whether you see those or we see students who don't use 3D. Uh, I feel like it's almost the opposite these days where Blender has become so abundant and so well known, mm -hmm. which is amazing. Yeah. There are a lot of students I see, um, I think I think it's a very weird thing where, like you said, the industry evolves very, very quickly. And so you can look at like me, Jules and Stefan, we're all trying to study concept art at the same time. And, you know, students now are studying it three or four years after we started studying it. Right. Um, so it's not a great deal of time in between. But, um, you know, when I think we were all doing it, we were watching Feng Zhu, uh, yeah. you know, always just talking about fundamentals, uh, mm. design basics, uh, mm. you know, big, medium, small, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, kind of taking I don't know just that kind of content where that was very much the emphasis and it seems that a lot of the emphasis has shifted now to 3D um, which means that a lot of students I personally find are doing a little bit too much uh, kind of taking stuff off Sketchfab and building their portfolio and scenes using things from that um, yep. or just kind of lack some of those fundamentals I think even if you uh, are designing vehicles and things mm -hmm. and Stefan I'm sure can agree with me on this yeah um you know it's great to have the 3d there but you need to be able to sketch over it and to change it uh, on a dime yes. because when you're dealing with a client sometimes it's not efficient to go back into 3d and you know painstakingly model a Most panel definitely. on a door yeah yeah so, uh, it's better just to get your paintbrush out and go yeah and you're done <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny you were talking about this, and again, we interviewed Antonio yesterday, and 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 Antonio was one of these guys who can you know sketch almost anything. He has a really strong understanding of fundamentals, and I mean, it's it's more I think if you're doing more stylized stuff like maybe he's doing, where you know the fundamentals are so much because you can't lean on 3D for stylization sometimes. I mean, you can get away with it. I mean, there's new tools that even within Blender where people can build stylized scenes. But I remember years ago, um, people trying to interpret that 3d and photo bash is going to be all you'd ever need you wouldn't even need to learn how to draw you know but then it's like like you said now he's seen students who are so heavy on 3d and photo bash that they can't draw to save themselves and you're trying to get out of designs where you're trying to make them think and design on the spot um because he talked you know where a couple of studios back in the day who were you know hiring people who had you know heavy photo bash or 3d scenes in their art station that were super pretty but then of course you get the ideation and iteration of things on paper and they were just really struggling to think well, how do i turn it in space how do you yeah. move stuff so yeah i think it's kind of the effect of art station generally which obviously we all love and art station is great but um you know it's that what you know what gets to the front page is really mm. nicely presented pretty stuff and a lot of it is you know uh talking about jammer again you know it's things made using big medium small or stuff where someone's taken a really good set off of sketchfab and they've lifted mm. beautifully um mm. But then, you know, most of those people that you see doing that are professionals. So they're not, they don't have to prove uh, they that can they draw. can design things, that they can draw, that they can build the, uh, their own scenes. But when yeah. you're a student, you know, I, I really, I mean, it's maybe a little bit overkill, but I would personally always suggest that students try and make everything in their scenes if they're using 3 themselves, because it's yes. going to be, you know, way more of a learning experience. And when mm -hmm. somebody comes up to you in an interview in the future and, and looks you through your portfolio and they say, oh, you know, what's this from? Where'd you get this? You can just go, oh, well, I made it. And that's instantly a plus one for, you know, yeah. getting hired because they, they go, okay, well, you know, if we can't find this prop or if our modelers can't do it or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, then, then they can do it, which is, you know, super important. That's a big chunk of the job. I think um, like uh, when I was looking for jobs, uh, there was a company I didn't get hired to, to it. I didn't really want to, there was some, uh, was, we weren't i think we weren't the perfect fit but but it was interesting because on the interview they uh they were looking through my portfolio they're looking at this jet that i did and they're like oh yeah i can see you can kid bash uh and i'm like i built that thing myself <laughs> and he was like, what really and to me that was like surprised that that the, the guy it, it almost it almost felt like he in a way maybe i don't know but to me it almost seemed like he didn't see the value in the in, in it kind of uh hmm. 
it was because it, it, that piece eventually uh or uh you know was something that you know because i had so much design there is something that my art director really liked that i could that i could, like broke it down and figured out how to design it and and all of that stuff and and i could prove them prove him like i did this i had the you know i had the process behind it i thought about it and um yeah that was that that, that was those that you know i feel like that's important as well yeah yeah no 100 percent. and i think like you know daniel was talking about and, and we've talked about with other people is that yeah fundamentals are you know the, the most successful people i've seen especially within the 2d realm are people you know that you look up to are always those guys who could design stuff on a napkin or an a4 page like it doesn't matter where they are or what they're using they can always ideate and make things from their brain and uh people don't really talk about the entrance of like concept art where there's a heavy emphasis on design I mean, if we go back to scott robertson's books and, and his influence on the industry initially you know he studied industrial design and design was a huge part of what he done um it was less painting aesthetics it was more just like it was the stuff that was functional you know form follows function a lot of the stuff he was making was stuff you could see in the real world moving and making and and, and interacting with other people so yeah i think it's something that's going to be influenced with students now where you say right you know you can paint you can draw fantastic but can you design can you make things functional can you comp can you light you know like there's other things that go on top of that and um, but again on a wide spectrum it depends where you're hired if you're at ilm if you're at shark mob if you're at disney if you're at, you know blizzard like everything's going to take a different style into how you work um like you know daniel uses specific tools because he's at ilm you know and you use stuff because you're at shark mob but you know it, it, as long as i think it's your flexible as long as your foundations are always solid you could probably jump between different yeah. stuff right i was just thinking we probably all use exactly the same tools i think no, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, except, Photoshop, except yeah. when we I, I know that uh you know sometimes i'll watch jules use photoshop occasionally when we hang out or step mm -hmm. and i think we all find it incredibly painful to watch each other use any of the programs because we're so zoned into how we use them and we'll all be yep. sitting there being like why did you just press that what are you doing yeah or the blender have, plugins like what plugin have you got new there's something else going on yeah there. have you like, uh, so have tried it. yeah but yeah, I think, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I think it's super important that we kind of have, and I think we are kind of probably going to get it pretty soon, but a little bit of resurgence of fundamental skills because, mm -hmm. you know, as 3D skills become more accessible and the programs become better and easier mm -hmm. to use and, you know, we having like an increasingly large library of things you can just grab on Quixel mm -hmm. and yeah. on, uh, you know, Sketchfab, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to find, I think, uh, this would be my message to anybody who's trying to get into the industry now, Mm -hmm. that the thing that makes you stand out from other people will be those other skills uh because yeah. those other skills are you know th that's less accessible in a lot of ways you know mm -hmm. learning perspective there's no quick way around it mm -hmm. uh you've just got to go through scott robertson's book and grind it out and cry a little yeah. bit and uh you get there in the end <laughs> man one point perspective is really easy what's this <laughs> perspective there's three. Oh my god wait hold on stop <laughs> yeah. every page you turn you get more panicked yeah so um, yeah, I mean, it's something that I hear with, you know, I've, I've nearly done over 100 interviews at this point with everybody from, you know, master studios in LA to people on the other side of the world. And they all have a common theme, which is fundamentals are things that will drive your career entirely through everything you do. You know, it doesn't matter if you learn 3D, if you learn ZBrush, if you learn a sculpt, whatever. Um, learn how to draw a person in perspective with a build behind them will be some of the most basic stuff and most useful stuff you will ever do in your life. And uh, people want to skip that because it's the, Oh, she fucking Gen Z kids, you know, in your TikToks. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's a difficult it's part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. The hard, it's the, people don't want to do the hardest part first because it's always I, the most I feel boring. like there's, there's knowledge and there's a tool. Mm -hmm. And like all the softwares are just tools. And of course, if you know how to use them well, you can probably express your knowledge in a better way. But yeah. at the end, it's just a tool. So like you, you might expect yeah, yeah. your speed, but you won't expect the efficiency of your design or, of course, or how good it looks. Yeah, I mean, like the thing is with the fundamentals is like people will look at a specific style, even, you know, we've talked about Yama a couple of times, but, you know, people want to be the next Yama and they will chase his shadow trying to make, you know, themselves into the next Yama. But Yama was never trying to be anybody, anybody the Yama, right? So like you don't want to be the next Yama, you want to be the next you, you want to be the next Daniel, the next Jules, the next Stefan, you know, yeah. you want to be somebody who others aspire to because your individualistic voice is something that will draw studios to you not just people but studios in general will want to look for something different you know you like you say you look at art station and it's just a wall of you know the same kind of stuff and art directors i know now sit on the front and look like through stuff and try to find like the different stuff well that's interesting what's that like and clicking yeah. stuff and you know so um and i think daniel's post on 
you know, make art and be happy was something that you don't see a lot in art station. It's not a very common thing, um, especially people breaking down almost like a blog sense and in, in, in that. What was the thinking behind that, Daniel? I'll link all this stuff below, of course, but where was that idea coming from at the time? Well, I'll confess that that was actually something I did for my graphics university uh, <laughs> when I was trying to convince them it was real. Um, right, okay. but I, I, I think at the time I was, I was in my final year of university. So, I mean, mm-hmm. just as a timeline, Mm. Uh, of kind of my life uh i mm. was in like i graduated during uh, quarantine or covid mm-hmm. or whatever we call it um yeah. and then i started i was super super lucky um and i started uh working at ilm like a month before i graduated so it was all very wow. kind of closely packed together yeah. um but the the make art be happy thing which for anybody listening is right at the bottom of my art station i think um it was kind of a it was an article where i i think i was uh kind of in, it was enforced that to me that i had to you know make some kind of sort of graphic piece uh about something right. so i yeah. thought i you know this was when i was like first starting to talk to a lot of <laughs> students and i when i was a student myself as well i mean the the ego is unbelievable but um <laughs> I, I kind of thought, you know, like I, I'd got so much amazing advice at that point. Um, somebody who, you know, there's so many people who helped me. Uh, Tom, Thomas Chamberlain Keen, who's a speaker at the event, was amazing. Yeah, good on yeah. as well. Yep. Um, uh, Kevin Fleeman, who is an mm-hmm. amazing artist, um, who like I genuinely he's one of those people who I just wouldn't have my career if I had never met him. Um, and you know, all these people gave me all this great advice. So I thought, well, I'll just compile this quickly into like, I don't know what it is, like six or seven pages, right. um, to, you know, help other people who are in my position. And, uh, I think mm-hmm. it was quite nice. I think I, it was off my portfolio for a while when I was mm-hmm. actually searching for a job. But, um, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I put it back up because, you know, even at the time and now I do get messages occasionally here and there, uh, just right. being like, oh, this is really useful to change my outlook on stuff a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, which is nice, you know. That's I yeah. mean to bring it back to the event. Uh, I'll go go big round circle, but uh, you know that's why we're putting together the event is to yeah. hopefully help you know set people's opinions. And we have so many awesome speakers coming, uh, like Tom. You know, mm-hmm. and I just kind of I'm, I'm I think the hope for all of us is that you know we all had like our little individual stories which we could tell you about, like oh I met this person and then this happened, and that's how I you know the, you have like a nice little narrative thread to. And then yeah. I'm working. Uh, yeah. But it, I think we all just really want to put it to, together because we want to create those little narrative threads for other people. I mean, that's a really mm-hmm. lovely thought to think that we can kind of continue that, that narrative in a way, you know, to yeah. uh, help people in the way that we were helped. Um, yeah. So Inspire the next generation and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, not me personally, you know, that's a, don't, don't be inspired. <laughs> <on me. laughs> but hopefully somebody at the event can inspire, you know, people who are coming. Yeah, um, yeah we try to have like a big variety of artists as well. Yeah. yeah. And companies, so like everyone can find his own niche or his own like style he likes a lot. So yeah, yeah and also making it free, just like, just you have no reason not to come, like just, and like, I'm pretty sure everyone is going to find an artist they like. It's like, you just yeah. get there. And experience the thing and get to meet people and and yeah just uh, get those narrative written yeah i mean, yeah, it's I mean super I... oh sorry no on you go on you go daniel i was just gonna say it's super important uh to you know as a concept artist like we were saying before it's so niche that i remember up until i was i think maybe like 21 i didn't have mm-hmm. anybody to socialize with or to talk about mm-hmm. this stuff with and you know even though I, I i went to a very kind of hardcore academic secondary school Mm. um and when i decided i was going to art university there was kind of this thing in my head where i was like oh my god finally i'll be with my people and i got there and Mm. then nobody was interested in what i was interested in (laughs) and i was like oh god so it was just kind of this continuation and and you know it's it was such a big thing to meet people like stefan and i Mm. I didn't meet jules at an event but we'll pretend Mm. that i did for this conversation um (laughs) you know to be able to to, to just have people that, you know, you can go down to the pub with and hang out with right. and you can all kind of say like, oh, did you see this thing on art station and things like that? Um, yep. That's a, that's a, you know, it can, it can be a little bit lonely when you're alone. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it's just so great to have people to chat with and to do things. With. Yeah. I think, I think like um, on top of that, I think just 
starting new friendships and meeting people that are like-minded at a conference mm -hmm. is quite important. I know yeah. if, you know, I know, I, I guess in general people in art, but uh, you know, some, if people are shy or whatever, you know, still try if you can, you know, show your portfolio or just talk to mm -hmm. people and this could it could really start like the friendships that you know that will carry you a long way mm -hmm. and uh yeah i think like a good example for that for for me would be with uh with daniel you know at, at the time i was in uni and i finished uh, and i was studying with my friend alex and you know we we were it was like the two of us we, we were just teaching each other uh because mm -hmm. there was not unfortunately that many kids that were so like into concept art and wanted to really make it uh, mm -hmm. So it was, you know, me and my friend and, you know, I met Daniel and, you know, Daniel really wanted to make it. <laughs> he was very serious about so, joining so ILM. Desperate. So desperate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was asking feedback, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, um, yeah, so, so you know, I met him and then Dan, Dan is, was, is quite good at reaching out to people. So he knew a lot of people online and we created a little Discord group uh with a bunch of people and we started to share share art it was only like 10 people at first and you know eventually you know we invited more and more people and uh it became this little little chat of people that you know now i'm uh, you know you know friends with and we all chat together and it's mm -hmm. it's it's awesome just to to have that and now you know you feel like you're in a community of people that really uh mm -hmm. are excited about this stuff and want to get better and I feel like this is something you can really find at the conference. It could be out yeah. of nowhere, just talking to some random person. So, yeah, or, or you know, in, in Stefan's case, uh, you needed like the uh, the. I think Stefan needed a. So when I first went to a conference, my reality check was realizing that I was a terrible artist. Um, <laughs> Stefan, uh, when I first met him, was doing. Can I can I tell the story? I think you know what I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can tell yeah. the story. Yeah, let's, Stefan let's was <laughs> totally insane routine and i remember meeting him and him uh, telling me about this i think you were doing like you know 14 hours of work a day or something Jesus and Jesus Christ. he uh, you know this was before covid and uh you were wow. planning to go to brainstorm uh for the summer yeah. and to spend i think you were saying like i don't know something ridiculous like you're like oh, i'm gonna get the most out of it and do 18 hour work days or something insane and what ended up happening was um so ahmed aldori who mm -hmm. I, I, uh, was a lovely guy who's helped me a friend of the time. podcast yep. yeah yeah <laughs> um <laughs> he was also coming to that event so i had seen i'd met him and seen him and um because mm -hmm. i was in his discord at the time mm -hmm. um he needed somewhere to do like a little group event after the mm -hmm. event so i kind of sorted out a place and we mm -hmm. had everybody over and we started it and I think the key moment that I'm sure Stefan must remember very well is we were all sitting together in like a big circle. There were maybe like 25 people there and everyone was kind of, you know, asking med questions and saying like, mm. oh, uh, you know, so how, what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? Mm. And Stefan kind of got his chance and he went, so I'm going to brainstorm and I'm going to do 18 hour work days. And I was thinking I'm not going to exercise and I'm going to just eat like mashed potato or something every day because that's so the most stomach. efficient food. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I just remember everybody in the room turning and being like, what, what are you on about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Good times. I mean, I was, uh, I was serious about it as well. But then yeah. uh, I guess COVID happened, so I never went to brainstorm. But, uh, uh, you know, I did actually do <laughs> insane <laughs> schedule with my friend Alex. We... Uh, we mm. did uh we were like oh brainstorms are happening well it doesn't matter we're just gonna like let's yeah. do the most crazy stuff we ever did and yeah. i and I, I will say from personal experience mm -hmm. you know if you want try it out it's not gonna make you a better artist like it, i didn't yeah. improve at all i think we did it for eight weeks and it was it was like you wake up you know at six well, or something weeks. six thirty huh yeah, I yeah i think or what's i didn't know yeah, it was eight weeks I wow I that's <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. I don't know. It, uh, it's and, amazing and we, that you're alive, honestly. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but but what we did, you like wake up at like six or seven. I don't know. And then you, it's it was kind of like the idea of like nonstop work. So you like you wake up and we the first week we tried it, we just tracked it by doing color studies. So we were like, oh, what if you if you track your color studies? Let's say you do seventy seven color studies in six days. Well, that's right. seventy seven hours of nonstop working. You know. 
So we tried it out. <laughs> uh, we managed it. Um, and then uh, and they were like, oh, that's great. You know, let's just keep it up. And uh, so we kept up the pace for, I think, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe it was, I think it was like six weeks or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And um, it was, uh, it was incredibly exhausting. You go to bed, you fall asleep like this, like, cause you are, yeah. you know, your brain is just like, okay, I'm tired. So like fall yeah. asleep right away. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I don't, you know, at the end of it, I learned a big lesson, mm-hmm. uh, which was. Um, one slide wins the race usually. Huh? Slow and steady wins the race. Is usually what I would say. You want it. It's, it's yeah. a marathon, yeah, not a sprint. Yeah. I think uh, it's just like, but it gave me an outlook on life. I realized that I didn't enjoy concept art for a very long time, um, and only it all. I only realized it when I got there. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's it took me a lot. Like I think a lot of people knew or saw it in me, but I didn't. So when mm-hmm. I when I actually got to the end of the of this uh, ridiculous routine, mm-hmm. and, and ended it because of this, you know realization that i had with my friend which was it was you know it was so incredible to just realize that oh yeah i need to actually learn what it means to enjoy like why am i doing this and you know mm-hmm. and then i went on a whole new journey mm-hmm. um so yeah sometimes it's you know if sometimes it, that's what it takes to understand for you to 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 learn mm-hmm. new things and sometimes it's good to push yourself but yeah more, more be of careful the story new friends can help you not go insane potentially yeah, yeah, no, 100%. Otherwise, no, I mean, I would still be there doing 77 color studies every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's the, the thing you have in your post, Daniel, where it's like, work smart, not hard. And I have some seen so many people who have talked about you want to train your brain for the long haul because it, you can't do so many short sprints because then you will just get burnt out. You'll hate what you do. Yeah. You know, you'll get, I mean, there's guys I know, and I interviewed a guy recently that is going to be going up soon, and he basically invented Spyro the Dragon and he worked at Insomniac when they were done Ratchet and Clank and he'd done four Ratchet and Clank games with him as well. Like his first game was Sonic the Hedgehog 2, like back in the day. Um, but he worked for so many years constantly doing, you know, all-nighters and breaking his back to do stuff that he now has spent 10 years not touching anything art-related. He's yeah. like a guide in a museum somewhere. Like he just totally just went off the radar, stopped doing art altogether. Like his brain was just so... Like he, he actually had PTSD from the, the events working at Insomniac. Um, yeah. You know, not maybe particularly for the studio at the time, but just he was pushing himself so hard personally that his body just gave up and uh, he just didn't want to do it anymore. So you really have to be disciplined to be balanced enough to have a social life in some regard, health, you know, yeah. working out, exercise, you know, eating healthy, all that kind of stuff, so that you can do that longevity. Because you look at the industry, especially within even VFX and games and movies, there's nobody really over the age of 45 you know, because <laughs> people get to a point where they're like, fuck this, and they're gone. You know, like, yeah. either they leave, you know, the studios, and then most people obviously in their, in their older years go freelance, you know, and they do their own thing. But, um, but like, yeah, like, studio work for a lot of people is, you can only do it for so long. It's like the Olympics. You know, you train like an athlete for so long, and you do it, and then once you've done it a couple of times, you're like, right, I've had enough, I need to go do something else now, so... I think um, that whole thing about pushing yourself is a very personal thing. Like, I know that uh, Stefan and Jules probably know that I, like, even though I'm working full time now, I still work pretty long time hours. Like, I'm quite happy doing my eight hour work then and doing another four or five hours after work. But that's you're in your just, 20s, Dan, you can do that. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that's what I like, like to say to people is that, uh, yeah. you know, it's all personal. Like, yeah. I think there's like certain things that you go through in life and uh, they, you know, if, if that doesn't work for you, then it doesn't work. You need to right. find that balance. I, I, I would almost encourage, like Stefan said, I wouldn't be against people trying it. Mm-hmm. I'd say that, but I just say, you know, you need to take it in a healthy stride and in a healthy way. Um, mm-hmm. Because if you get to the point where you're sitting there in a, you know, room thinking, I'm just going to eat mashed potatoes, you've gone too far. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's just it's important to find that balance and like even even you know I'm saying that I do like four hours work after work every day like it's not yeah, every yeah. day and I you know I cut out time to socialize to go to parties mm. to hang out with friends to hang out with these guys to yep. uh, even to organize this event you know so it's mm. important to find your own personal balance and what makes you mm. happy and what makes you feel fulfilled you know yeah yeah, definitely. I mean, like, I remember going to an event in IMAG in Paris way back in the day, and they had a guy across from um, a Pixar, I think it was the time. I can't remember the guy's name at all, so don't even ask me, but he gave one of the best pieces of advice I've ever had in my entire life, and that was work like you already have the job. Like, if you get up out of your bed in the morning and you're like nine o'clock, you're sitting at your desk, you start working, you work to 12, you have an hour break, you go back at one, and you work to five o'clock, 
do more work then you get up and go out and enjoy the rest of your night it's like just set your days every single day monday to friday like you're working at that studio give yourself a brief give yourself a time de- a deadline or whatever you're going to do and then just work you know and then that'll prep you for actual work because you know when you speak to people even i know people who are in um um that you know they've done this whole thing where they're in university university and you say to them how often are you draw per week and they're like i don't know maybe five or six hours a week and you're like oh, okay cool well i mean <laughs> if you want to work 40 hours a week in a studio it's not really going to cut it <laughs> like i mean you might not be drawn for 40 hours but you're definitely going to spend a bulk of that time drawing stuff or painting or so you really have to start training your body and your brain like that's your schedule you know at least six or seven hours a day doing something if you want to be working in full time in the industry then you know um you know it's, it, yeah it's basically going to be the, the whole thing you have to focus on but then again with the event you know i think that's one of the things that's great when you come to talk about these these speakers and guys that come up that they will probably you know give tales and stories that will hopefully inspire other people i mean so the speakers you've got lined up it's quite an eclectic mix right because you have individual concept artists but you also have studios that are coming to do talks as well so how did you balance the kind of two stages you guys have so what one stage is is for the talkers um Mm -hmm. sorry for the individual talkers so that's uh, right yeah freelance artists or just artists coming representing themselves and the second stage is the company stage um we yeah as i said before we really wanted to have a lot of different um type of artists or companies representing like movies uh, video games series uh cartooning style uh, realistic yep. style um mm-hmm. uh, vehicles all that kind of things and we yep. really try to, to have this balance where um yes as i mentioned earlier again is to everyone has something that will interest them and also mm-hmm. having different style you, you get to hear different stories different uh, mm-hmm. workflows and um yeah yeah, I think yeah. there's something valuable, although it is, like you said, like a bit eclectic. I, yeah. I think there's something valuable about every single person who's coming. Um, mm-hmm. Especially, I mean, I think we should also say, you know, thank you to everyone who is coming because obviously they're coming for free. And it's a really kind of like, uh, it's a very nice act of generosity that, you know, they're extending to the community um, mm-hmm. because they're coming of their own time you know free of charge to you know tell their story and to help people and to talk about what they think is important yeah. um and i think you know if you want to do stylized work and you go to the talk by no axe you know who's this amazing hard surface vehicle artist you're probably right. going to get something great from that he's gonna you know hopefully you know whether it's something inspiring he says or some piece of workflow that suddenly you find to be very useful in your own workflow that's great um so yeah and i mean beyond that we also have just uh you know great sponsors who have helped make this event happen uh so the brainberg sharp mob uh moon colony and um oh, Bidding practice Bidding also practice, yes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry Jules. Them. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah they, they've all extended kind of their help and um you know they've really they're the ones who've made this happen in a lot of ways um because mm. they I think they believe in the community in the UK mm-hmm. and, and the importance of having a community in the UK um, yeah. and in Europe in general, because we have some people, I mean, you know, who are coming from all over the place, which is awesome to see. Uh, so it's very kind of exciting for us. And um, yeah. 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 I mean, it's one of these things as well that even the stuff like the booths and the portfolio reviews are things that people will overlook at the events because they focus on the talks and the talks are great. But it's also great to just also meet the studios because people might, you know, for instance, Sharkmore, for instance, or somebody like that, or even Brainbug, where they'll think, oh, I really want to work there. Like, that's the dream studio. That's where I want to go. And, you know, talking to specific recruiters can either definitely make you more excited to go work in the studio or maybe even be thinking, oh, man, they're not quite the fit that I want. Or maybe it's not specifically doing the thing I want to do because, you know, if they're working on a project at the moment, it's maybe like more hard surface or more mechanical, more sci-fi. And you think to yourself, that's not quite what I want to work on. Then you know yeah. you get a good chance to meet those people and even the the possibilities i've had like when i turned to actor studios like i met jill and john uh beeston at the event and industry workshops in 2016 they were at a booth they were they were at a table just sitting talking and through that just conversation that's how i ended up interning them for them so i mean like those are also just as important i think right as the talks yeah the four yeah, of you are awesome sorry it shows you yeah, yeah cool. um, so the, the events are very important for companies, as you said, because uh, mm-hmm. having talked to many recruiters, that's like the best place for them to hire or just to get to know someone because you, you can see someone's work that looks great. But then when you meet them or when you have an interview, when you talk to them, like if, yeah. if the person is 
is not the best one to be around. They're just not going to hire them, like no yeah. matter the quality of the art. And at, at events, that's like the best place to figure out someone, uh, how they behave uh, and, and just if, if they're nice to be around. And for, for companies to be able to, to first of all be visible uh, by only concept artists, it's, it's very valuable. Then to be able to, to uh, do both reviews and to like kind of push your own ideas of design and like to, to get people to, uh, to, to improve because they met you mm -hmm. kind of things is just, um, yeah, brings a lot of value. It's also a great way to just build up relationships with companies. I mean, I think I owe a lot of the kind of likelihood of my job at ILM to portfolio reviews because I did them, I think, two years in a row at Vertex before I applied for the job. So I kind of built up that relationship by showing, you know, that I was serious about improving uh, mm -hmm. because over that period of time, you know, year on year, I was trying my hardest um, to, you know, really kind of get to that standard that you need mm -hmm. to be. Um, and being able to go in and, and meet them multiple times and say, oh, it's me again, hello, <laughs> here's the new stuff, um, mm -hmm. was really valuable because uh, I, I, I mean, I haven't spoken to them about it, but I'm sure, you know, it helped my case when they could see that, you know, that's how seriously I was taking it, that, you know, I was making those kind of leaps and bounds across uh, in, in between the chances I got to speak to them, essentially. So, yeah. There's also a big difference between well, I mean, even if you have a lot of friends who do concept art, uh, I'm sure the feedback is very valuable. But if you ask someone in, in the industry or even more like a recruiter, the feedback is the, the best you can get because they're the person who's going to decide to hire you. This, they know they, they, that's the job every day, uh, every week. So uh, they, they have the knowledge. And uh, I remember for myself as well, when I, when I used to go to the events, uh, I, throughout the year, I would kind of build some confidence into my own work. And then I would get to the event and then I would just get real feedback from people who know what I'm talking about. And I'd be like, okay, yeah, well, actually, uh, I know nothing. Like all these, and like they would just break down every point that wasn't good. And I was like, of course, like, of course, that's not good. I need to improve on it. But I just yeah. kind of become blind on with, with this thing during the whole year. Like, so I would leave yeah. the event. I'd be like, okay, now I know exactly what I need to work on. And I know exactly what I need to, uh, to target to get better. And then yeah. every year will go. And I would go up again to get feedback, and it would be the same same thing every year. Yeah. So I know, I know um, that feeling very well. Yeah, yeah. and like that... it's it's not only the the portfolio reviews that you can book one on one. It's also just going to people and ask people around. There's going to be lots of professionals, lots of uh, students as well. So yeah, just you know, getting your sketchbook or portfolio out and asking for feedback to anyone could be like very very beneficial. This is a good time to say that make sure. Uh, your art is, uh, you know, if it's, it's either printed nicely or ideally it's on a on an iPad or mm -hmm. something like that or a laptop uh, yeah. and it's all preloaded so you can yeah. just show it to someone right away, be pro you know, so you look professional yeah. and, uh, you know, so you're not taking someone else's time. Like, uh, this will this will get you far as well. <laughs> like, if you just go like, oh, it's my... <laughs> My art is here, and they they could just you know people love that they could just like scroll through it quickly, be you know be like oh this there zoom in whatever, mm -hmm. just have a look at it. That's that's uh, quite important uh, as well. So it's so if you you know yeah someone coming up to you and saying oh can you look at my work and then going um ah uh, uh, wait it'll be there in a minute uh, wait just give me a second. <laughs> uh, it's only uh, your phone, let's... which is like a tiny wee screen. You're like can you can you yeah. see it? Can you can you see it? Like, yeah, what do you yeah. Think? yeah, definitely. If you you know I, I guess this is more to like people who are looking to come into industry. But if you want to show your portfolio, do not show it on your phone. I mean, no. bring a laptop, bring an iPad, bring something. Um, and if you don't have those things, then yeah, print it off. I mean, I, I walked around at an event one year with a printed off thing and uh, I think yeah. everyone thought I was odd, but it's better than a mobile. So. Honest to God, I, yeah. I, you know what I love about printed out is the fact that I've seen so many art directors sit with people at reviews and they'll get a pen out and <laughs> circle, correct, like write stuff down and you're like, oh my God, that's so, that's so useful. Like even if there's a blank page on the other side, they'll just write stuff down and like, you know, that for me, I think is infinitely better than... You know, the, I mean, like, I think I love the fact that I think it's still only a pro feature, but with ArtStation, you can make an offline portfolio so you can have your basically your whole po ArtStation portfolio offline. So you can just mm -hmm. click through stuff and show people. So that is also handy. But uh, yeah, definitely being prepared and putting your best foot forward because presentation also is one of these things that comes across in professionalism. Right? You want to make sure that people don't think you're some rank also, amateur. Um, but you've... Accepting feedback is very important. If, if you ask oh, yeah. to someone and then you kind of, I, I, uh, 
you debate on every little single thing just yeah, for yeah. your ego. I mean, then they fight them. Yeah, oh, that's the worst like, thing. Okay, uh, you probably know more than me, so I'll take it. Um, yeah, if, yeah. It, it doesn't mean you cannot just disagree, but the you worst know, thing I think I've ever seen is you both review. Yeah, the worst thing I think I've ever seen with people, especially that I done, I think early on, was that you open or you hand somebody a piece, and then before they've even started looking at you, you're like, oh, just to let you know, and you know. It was really rainy that day. My pen wasn't working properly in my wacko. <laughs> <laughs> I, I meant to change this bit, and I know it looks like that already, but then it's, and it's like, well, why the fuck are you showing me that? Like, if it's half finished, like, just show me something that's done. Um, yeah, if you if you start making excuses before you've even handed stuff to people, they're going to be like, oh, okay, well, just don't show it to me. Like, you know, because then you, you don't want to leave a bad impression in someone's mouth. That's the worst thing. Because then you, if, you're, if your stuff's really bad or not presented well, you know, you'll be coming to the booth the next year and people are like, oh, fuck, I ain't quite avoid them. <laughs> you know, like, exactly. because this did again. But uh, yeah, the, the more you can, you can, and I've done it. Like, I, I'm going to hold my hands up. I have tried to show someone way back in the day something on my phone. And, you know, I definitely got told, like, I kind of look, I kind of look at your phone, Gordon. Like, well, how yeah. am I going to make any, <laughs> how am I going to make that out? Like, your phone, even back then, my phone was even smaller. So there was no way they were going to see it. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah, you definitely want to be as prepared as you can be going into these things. And, it will go a long way to to making sure that people have a lasting impression of you, um, a good one, especially. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, that's probably a, a good place to 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 end it. I mean, for you guys who are, are still listening, thanks for coming this far. And um, the event details, I will leave everything below. Um, if you guys have any questions about it, um, I'll also leave contact details that the guys will provide me. If you want to get in touch, also probably a link to their Discord, which they also have as part of the event um and concept 101 is the event again i'll leave everything below the website the whole lot um tickets at the moment as far as i know guys are sold out they're gone yep correct we've got a waiting list set up so if you would like to get a ticket from whenever this is released then you can sign up the waiting list and uh hopefully something will become available but for now mm -hmm. completely sold out yeah for right, the, okay. for the yep. waiting list you can uh, go on our instagram and there's a post about it basically you have to send an email to to an email address and you right. be on, the, on the next spot on the waiting list. Um, yeah, no, very, so yeah, the, the faster you do it, the more chance you have to to get a ticket. To get one, yeah. Very and um, rarely. At the moment, Sorry. we have more like puffy reviews as well available. Yes. Right. So I don't know when this will be released, but chances are more puffy reviews are. This should be going out. I think, I think we'll probably agree on here on the podcast that this will probably go out before the event, just so people have a chance to Amazing. listen to you guys. Oh, ho hopefully, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> We'll make you a point to... of it. No, not after. This is, yeah, yeah. This is where we're all sitting here going yeah. like, it's going to yeah. be great. And, and there's like photos of the whole building on fire or something. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, great. It, it was great. It's made out of brick, the whole thing. Like, yeah, yeah. So the thing would be in fire. <laughs> yeah. It'll be gone. Uh, uh, no, okay. right. It won't be on fire. So it's going to be a great Yeah, there will be no fire. <laughs> yeah, no fire. It's going to be a yeah. great event. Don't worry, guys. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it will be. Talking to you guys definitely is inspiring. And I think you definitely have your heads on a swivel when it comes to what you're trying to do and i'm glad that there is at least somebody trying to do something you know because like you said when the show workshop's gone there's definitely been a gap that's needed to be filled um and uh yeah i mean definitely i'm, I'm looking forward to, to coming down on the ninth and checking it out so yeah it's gonna be we'll see you guys there um yeah again so like i say to guys who are listening everything's down below you can check out all the links and all the, the attachments and uh any questions or any feedback you want you guys can leave comments in the, in the youtube video i'm sure we'll, we guys will get to it at one point but yeah that's pretty much it um thanks to Daniel, Jules, and Stefan for coming on and giving up their time. Um, it was really awesome to listen to you guys talk and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found some use of, of, of bantering. I'm sure there'll be many more instances where we'll, we'll yeah. chat away. No, thank yeah. you for a lovely time, Johnny. Yeah, I just wanna, yeah cheers. Yeah. I want to also say thank you to Jules and Daniel who are, uh, you know, and be, because, you know, we are all organizing this together and, mm -hmm. um, you know, we are all, you know, we, we are helping each other a lot. It's, it, it is a lot mm -hmm. to do, a lot of, yeah. lot to sort out. And, um, I think only three of like, as a, as a together is the only way we could organize it like this, this For much. Sure. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I was just going to say also, talking to, to Daniel on that back in the day and Alex, it was the same. Like they, they definitely had a huge bond. The years they put energy workshops on, you know, it was a thing where it brought them closer together as friends and, and definitely helped them grow as artists and professionals. So. I think, you know, the more you guys can do this every year successfully, I think it will definitely help you not only professionally, but personally also just as people. So, um, and the, the reward you'll get, I mean, I've been doing the podcast now for five years and when I get emails from students or people who send me feedback that the podcast inspired them or like they've listened to stuff and it's made them want to get into concept art. And, you know, one of my, one of my close friends in the industry now is someone who 
went through college listening to me in the podcast and now is working professionally as a 3D character artist. So like, you know, like stories like that are stuff that will definitely stay with you forever. Well beyond just putting the event on, the, the, the idea that you'll get to inspire other people is always the biggest reward. So yeah, 100%. Well, okay, I hope guys, we, can, we can do the same with all events. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm sure it's, you it's will. It's really um, a, big, a big inspiration and I think main goal of the events. Just, inspire people exactly 100%. yeah cool okay guys right again yeah thanks again for coming on uh thanks again for listening and we will see you guys in the next episode okay. bye guys thanks for having us see you thank cheers you. thank you